CLL may be um, at um, a different stage of development where we now, um, I try to make the point when, if you get the slides, that uh, chemotherapy is actually uh, largely replaced, um, in, I think in first line also, and I show you data for that. So um, don't belabor you with these slides, but I think the novel agents that target specific pathways in B cells uh, are really, really potent, and we could highlight on ibrutinib, idelalisib a little bit less, and venetoclax uh, circled here. And finally, I also would like to stress, because there's a lot of debate um, uh, in Twitter and in meetings and everywhere, whether we need the anti-CD20 antibody, and I strongly believe so, because they have been the agents that actually made the first change uh, and created survival differences. And you see here rituximab and obinutuzumab for the two types of antibodies, type 1 and type 2. So this is uh, what we have achieved over the last, let's say, four decades, coming from very minimal overall response rates and no complete remission, or at least no MRD negative remissions to situations where with combinations we now generate uh, overall response rates around 100%, at least uh, in some of the trials that we've done, and uh, MRD negative remissions between 80 to 90%, uh, so that there is a real fundamental change in how we treat CLL, and the most potent things in CLL, at least if you want to achieve this, are combinations. It's not monotherapies, it's combination that can achieve deep remissions. Now, the problem with CLL, as you know, is we are treating patients that are elderly. So a typical 70-year-old looks like this. <laughs> oh, yeah, you're not doing, you don't go to work out this. Uh, so basically, we have, <laughs> no. So you have these two different types of patients, uh, as you know, and most of them look like the one to your right. Uh, so that basically can even be younger than 70 years old, but they look uh, a little bit sick, and so you have to adjust your th therapies, at least we thought so, maybe it's changing. So what I'm doing is very quickly uh, show you the approach and the changes that have been made on the fit population, and then I will go for the unfit population. Uh, so this is important because in the era of hype about novel agents, everybody speaks about uh, chemo is over, and I don't think it is over yet. Uh, FCR is inducing a survival benefit for the patients that are fit and have particular molecular aberrations. So if you look at the population of IGVH mutated patients uh, with certain aberrations, deletion 13Q, deletion um, um, 11Q, or trisomy 12, you see long-lasting survival curves. And in some of these patients, if they have an MRD negative status, half of them or so, MD Anderson data, our own data, also, Pete Hillman's data, approximately 50% or more are still without relapse after seven to 10 years. So there is a population that might benefit a lot from this treatment, and we just simply shouldn't for forget that. So this is the series of events that we've done over the years from coming from fludarabine monotherapy, and you see that sequentially here combina combinations yielded higher efficacy, and we are currently at CL13 in the German group and internationally recruiting where we compare this standard chemo immunotherapy to non-chemo combinations and we'll see uh, what the outcome is. However, there is a challenge and the challenge is the last ASH meeting as you know and all the subsequent papers. There was lots of ibrutin monotherapies coming and I will show you the three trials that are the most relevant ones and then put them into context. So this is one. Uh, the uh, Tate Schenefeld, uh, the uh, intergroup trial, that um, echo trial that is, I think, about to be published, uh, if I'm rightly informed, comparing in the uh, relatively fit population, they actually took this definition below uh, 70 years, ibrutinib versus FCR. And surprisingly, they got a very, very, well, not surprising, a good PFS difference, but I think it was remarkable that a monotherapy can actually uh, compete. However, this is a continued therapy. The real surprise in this trial was that they seemed to see, and I'm actually emphasizing the seam here, they seemed to see a survival difference. It's relying on 16 events overall, so a very low number of events, but they were very imbalanced. Also, since you have a two-to-one randomization, so they had to take it serious. But I'm simply saying I'm not so sure whether this holds up if you have a longer testing, because many of these cases, four to six, were CLL deaths. And uh, having CLL deaths early in a trial at our times where you can actually rescue patients, usually with non-chemotherapeutic agents, is a bit unusual. So we are not totally sure, but this is a remarkable event. And if it's true, then we would say abrutinib is a drug for the fit patients. That's a little odd, but you could say that. 
so the other trial that was a plenary that uh, was presented by the Alliance North American Intergroup showed you also now bendamust in the older patients, fit and older. Um, very impressive differences in PFS compared to chemotherapy, bendamust and rituximab here, but no difference in overall survival so far. So basically here is just the opposite in the a little older patients, no, no difference in overall survival. What's the difference, what's the status in the typical CLL patient, the unfit patient that you show here one more time? So we went, I think, systematically from chlorambucil, and despite all the, all the desire to get rid of chlorambucil, it actually lasted for a very long time. So fludarabine didn't beat it, actually R-TROP, mini-TROP, and all these things in the 80s and 90s did not beat chlorambucil. It always survived as the winner, uh, even in meta-analysis. And then uh, the combination with antibodies here again created a difference, the 11, and finally we have a CLL-14 protocol that Kirsten Fisher represent here. But here, obinutuzumab improves survival. Here's another surprise. If you do it right in the elderly patients, comorbid, they have a lot of comorbidity, you create survival differences. Again, the challenge here is monotherapy with ibrutinib is also doing very well. This trial compared to chlorambucil monotherapy, so we could argue, well, they have not used the combination, maybe we don't know, but uh, whatever you think, uh, this curve is really impressive. Ibrutinib is doing a good job in these patients. Again at ASH, there was a, the third important trial in first line here, the Illuminate trial, also published recently by Carol Moreno in the Lancet Oncology, I think. Uh, so here again, a very um, impressive difference in PFS um, in this trial compared to chlorambucil or benotuzumab, and no survival difference. So we have three trials that have ibrutinib monotherapy, one of them, and surprisingly in the younger, claims to have a survival difference, two of them don't. So, so far we can probably do um, everything because uh, we have no proven benefit except to say that the PFS differences are uh, very impressive. Now, the last trial I want to mention briefly because it's changing uh, the way that we are actually thinking about therapy is again a trial without chemotherapy, testing venetoclax um, obinutuzumab for six cycles followed by venetoclax for six cycles. So it's a year, one year of treatment in the unfit population, the same as for CL11, so they're very unfit compared to the old standard chlorambucil obinutuzumab, and we did chlorambucil for one year. So we actually had a longer treatment, and uh, it was presented um, just uh, last week at the EHA meeting in a plenary session, and shows you a very impressive uh, difference again here, without, but you stop therapy after one year against uh, chlorambucil obinutuzumab, and the, let's say, attractiveness of this is that despite stopping therapy, you achieve very deep remissions that go below 10 to the minus six by next generation sequencing, so very, um, very impressive um, MOD negativity, and you see in comparison here chlorambucil uh, obinutuzumab is moving up very quickly, so their emissions are not that deep and are moving back again, while with venetoclax they seem to last longer and are deeper. So therefore, uh, this is, so to say, the only slide you have to pay attention to. Um, you don't treat still early disease. You'll see an abstract here um, uh, in presented at the plenary session by Petra Langerbeins, but we still believe early inactive disease should not be treated. If the disease becomes active, and here, I think that's why I was pushing it a bit in the mantle cell and follicular lymphoma. If you have high risk features, in particular the lesion 11, 17P or P53 mutation, we know that chemo doesn't work and uh, it has no place whatsoever anymore. And here you can actually use either ibrutinib or venetoclax. The data allow to do everything. In the patients that have no unfavorable risk features, so no deletion 17P53 dysfunction, here everything has changed for the unfit patients. Venetoclax obinutuzumab becoming one first-line option, but you can also debate uh, chlorambucil obinutuzumab. I listed, and I, didn't, I did not have time to explain that the IDVH mutational status is of importance because the differences are most relevant with targeted agents for the patients with the unmutated status. So there they act, and this is why the order of um, mentioning those things changes a little bit if you pay attention, but uh, this combination is introduced now. You can debate the three options, and you have to weigh the side effects and the positive aspects, the costs, the long-term treatment with these patients. In the fit patients, uncertain. It's certainly possible now and new that ibrutinib actually plays a role in the unmutated patients 
uh, that are fit. And it's surprising that this is the place where we see most of the benefit. Maybe cardiac toxicity is not so relevant for the, unf for the young patients with uh, CLL. So I think you see lots of non-chemotherapy in the first line setting of CLL. Um, the only place where I still persist and use FCR uh, also outside of clinical trials is the fit patients with a mutated IGVH status and other criteria that allow to get for a long-term remission. Thank you. Thank you.